My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on the subject of atrial fibrillation and in particular I wanted to address a concern a lot of people have about the risk of taking uh, anticoagulants uh, which are also described as blood thinning medication. This is actually a wrong description. They're not actually blood thinning medications, they don't thin your blood, uh, what they do is they stop your blood from clotting or they reduce, they, they increase the amount of time it takes for the blood to clot. So we know that people who have atrial fibrillation, who are above the age of 65 or who have comorbidities such as diabetes, high blood pressure, heart failure, uh, vascular disease, previous strokes, have a higher um, incidence of strokes. Uh, and therefore, it is recommended in these people that they take some form of anticoagulant, uh, which reduces the risk of strokes. In research, we know that taking an anticoagulant tends to reduce our risk of stroke in atrial fibrillation by about 60%. If you take aspirin, on the other hand, that seems to reduce the risk only by 20%. So there is no doubt that it is well proven that the anticoagulant is far more effective than aspirin at preventing the risk of strokes in those people who are older, who have comorbidities and who have de developed atrial fibrillation. What is not so clear, however, and what causes a lot of people a lot of concern is the risk of bleeding. You know, their worry always is that, look, you know, I'm going to be taking this medication. My clotting is not going to be normal. And what about it causing a significant major bleed? Could I bleed to death? Is that, you know, and that is a real concern in people's mind. So I wanted to try and uh, uh, discuss a very interesting study with you, which may uh, help uh, allay some of those concerns. All right. There was a really interesting study called the Averroes study, A-V-E-R-R-O-E-S, Averroes study. This was published in 2011 in the New England Journal of Medicine by Stuart Connolly et al. And I'm going to put the link on my on the Heart Help Weekend <coughs> Facebook page. And I'll tell you about that in the, uh, at the end of the video. So basically what they did was they these guys took about 5,600 patients um, who were all at a higher risk of having strokes. But for some reason, these people could not take warfarin. And so what they did was they randomized these people into two groups. One group got aspirin. The other group uh, got apixaban uh, five milligrams twice a day. This is also described as Eliquis. The name for apixaban is also Eliquis, the brand name. And this Eliquis is a, nov is a new agent uh, which is like warfarin, but doesn't require all the monitoring that is associated with warfarin. It's called a NOAC or a DOAC, and, and it's commonly available. So what these guys were interested in doing was taking these people who couldn't take warfarin and giving them either aspirin or giving them this apixaban five milligrams twice a day. Uh, and what they wanted to do is to try and firstly ascertain which group had a higher incidence of strokes, but more importantly, which group had more bleeding and particularly major bleeding, life-threatening bleeding. Um, and so uh, it was really, really interesting because actually what they found was, yes, undoubtedly a uh, significantly lower number of people had strokes when they were taking the Eliquis compared to aspirin. All right. Uh, and so when you look, uh, there were over the course of uh, the follow-up period, which was, I think, about two years, uh, it was about certainly over one year and less than two years, the, there were 51 strokes in the group that had the apixaban and 113 in the group that had the aspirin. So undoubtedly, the risk of strokes was substantially higher in the group of patients who was taking aspirin, who were taking aspirin. This is not surprising. We know that. We know that aspirin only reduces the risk of strokes by about 20%, whereas apixaban would reduce it by 60%. So this was not surprising. What was more interesting is the risk of bleeding. Which group had 
uh, more bleeding. You know, our in immediate instinct is that aspirin, we use it all the time. It's probably not associated with much bleeding and the apixaban, because it's a proper anticoagulant, would cause a significantly higher amount of bleeding. But actually, when they looked, they found that actually in these people, there was no difference in the bleeding risk of uh, 2,600 patients who were taking aspirin there were only 44 major bleeding events. Uh, and in those people who were taking the aspirin, there were 39 major bleeding events. So there was really no difference, okay? And the risk of bleeding was 1.4% per year on the uh, apixaban or the eliquis, and 1.2% per year on the aspirin. So really, when you look at it statistically, there was no difference at all. So this is really interesting because what it tells us is that eliquis, this new agent, is substantially better at preventing strokes compared to aspirin, but is no more harmful than aspirin in terms of causing bleeding, and the bleeding risk is small. So for those people who feel that, oh my God, you know, I'm worried about taking this blood thinning medication, what will it do to me? Could I bleed? Actually, research indicates that this is no more harmful in terms of causing major bleeding than just aspirin. And I hope this uh, alleviates some of the concern that people have about taking uh, anticoagulants in uh, the setting of atrial fibrillation. So uh, I hope you found this video useful. What I will do is I'll put a link to the study on my Facebook page. Uh, and in particular, I'm going to first put it on the Heart Health Weekend Facebook page. So I just wanted to quickly talk to you about the Heart Health Weekend. On the 4th and 5th of August this year, I'm going to be in New York and I'll be hosting a seminar uh, uh, where I'll be talking about palpitations, atrial fibrillation, ectopic heartbeats, uh, POTS, uh, and anything that people want me to talk about. The uh, other thing to say is that if you are able to attend that, then you can have a free consultation with me. So there's no charge to this. And you just can come up to me, ask me any questions you like, uh, and I will try and answer them for you. It, it's all, it's free one-on-one -on -one consultations, uh, which we will be doing as part of this event. The cost of the event is only really the cost of the meal that you'll get when you come there. Uh, if you want to find out more, please visit www.hearthealthweekend.com. And the other thing I wanted to uh, request is if you enjoyed this video, please um, uh, leave me a comment. Tell me about your experiences with your atrial fibrillation, what you take uh, and whether it's working for you. Uh, and also, if you uh, like the channel, then please consider subscribing and sharing, and I would be very grateful for that. Thank you so much, and have a great night.